Neil Kaplan specializes in playing some outrageous villains like Emperor Zarkon from Voltron and Madra Uchiha in Naruto. But in reality, he's one of the nicest and funniest guys you'll meet. It may or may not surprise you to find out that Neil actually got his start in comedy. So I want to welcome you all and welcome Neil to Allison's Wonderland. My name is Allison Packard and I'm your host. You're watching Allison's Wonderland, inside the world of animation and games. Hey Neil, how's it going? I'm, well, I'm thrilled to be here. Oh, I'm so happy that you're here. Yes. Cheers. I, welcome. I can't welcome believe that I'm I'm included amongst your rather notable celebrities that you've had on here. You it's, are one of the greats. You're slumming this week. <laughs> You are one of the greats, Neil. Oh, stop it. Oh, stop uh, it. You've been working in cartoons and animation for a long time. Care to tell us about your very first um, gig? Uh, Do you even remember? Well, y yeah. Um, I mean, I, I, I basically, I was studying musical theater in New York City. Is that and, where you grew up? No, no, no. I grew up in Northern California. Okay. Um, I was at USC and... Didn't quite fit in with the cool kids mm. down there. Savvy. And so I decided to do a little reset <clears throat> and, um, excuse me, and decided to study musical theater. I loved musical theater. Unfortunately, it's like I could act, I could sing, I couldn't dance. Uh, um, well, yeah. the nice thing is I'm starting to get back to the, I'm starting to get to the age of the characters I used to play. Oh, when you're, I was you're, a kid. you can, you can dance now because TikTok is teaching you how. No, I can't dance, but I can play the old guys in the show that don't <laughs> dance. Nice. You know, theater. Here you come, Broadway. Yes, uh, you know what? Um, uh, my <laughs> wife and I are looking to buy a house back east, and I said, e -e -e -e, when that happens, I'll probably go back to uh, some acting classes. Oh, I love that. And it's funny because a friend of mine mm -hmm. um, is the musical director of Mr. Saturday Night with Billy Crystal on Broadway right oh, now. Oh wow! And so I've gone to see it twice. And so my friend said, y "You should do it." Because there really isn't as much competition as there hey used now, to be. Hey now, perks of getting older. And, and no, and the reason is, and I said, let me guess, because by the time guys get to be my age, if they're not booking, they're dropping out. They're quitting. They're mm. moving on to something Retired. else. Yeah. Sure. You're moving so, on to voice acting, actually. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, because then I'll have students when I start teaching back in yeah, New York. Totally. But uh, yeah, and it's funny because when I go to high school reunions, um, people see me and they go, you look the same. And I'll say, no, this is just how I used to make myself up every couple of <laughs> weeks so for funny. a different show. And the but, lines happen to be in the same place that I used to draw them. So, yeah. Yeah. so, so you started in theater and then what made you move back to Hollywood? I, well, I, I ended up, um, meeting a disc jockey in New York and I did a bunch of drop-ins yep. for his show, you know, celebrity impre impressions, yeah. which I stopped like doing. Billy West. Yeah, but Billy's good. <laughs> um, and I stopped doing them because I met Mel Blank. Oh. And Mel Blank said to me, he said, impressions of a hacks, kid original characters. So I kind of stopped doing that. And I've, I've gotten back to it a little bit, as you might've seen on TikTok with, with some of the things People that I- People love impressions on the internet. And, 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 and it ends up, I do a couple of them fairly okay. And some of them I love to do, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I, yeah. Hi, I'll, I'll drop in a Norm MacDonald with a drop of a hat. Let me tell you. No, it's really, you know, it's not a big thing there, you know? <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's like I was saying the other day, I was talking to Satan. And so anyway, um, <laughs> I just, I drop into it. Um, it's just fun. So yeah, I, I, I came back to Northern California um, because I was auditioning for musicals as a, a young man in my er early twenties and not getting anything. Yeah. And so I came back and I started studying musical theater and I signed with an agent mm -hmm. and my first job was helping to develop cardio cardiac sonogram technology I riveting was, i was a model heart oh yeah i was a wow. heart i was a heart model that was like my first job as an actor i knew you had good heart yeah <laughs> <laughs> so um and then i i, I took a, i took a workshop with sue blue 
Ugh, and the whole weekend started with, well, you know, you should study and take your time. Mm -hmm. And in a few years, uh, perhaps think about moving to LA. By the end of the weekend, uh, we recorded Thumbelina a few times. And I think I played like eight different characters. And so she said, so when you get down to LA, mm -hmm. let me know. And I thought that was like the sign of approval. And I came rushing yeah. down and um, picked up a drama log one day. And they were looking for voices for Mighty Morphin Power Rangers season two. Oh, my God. And I sent in my tape. And that's where I Wow. Oh, working. that's a pretty big show to just say. Bump into. Well, I mean, look, it was a neighborhood kind of a thing, basically, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm still friends with with people that I met doing that show um, 25 years ago. Uh -huh. uh, yeah. So and and I I've basically I'm one of those I'm one of those actors. I've cobbled things together. I've never had a regular gig. Mm -hmm. I've never been the spokesperson for anything. I've never, even my characters that have had decent runs on shows have never been regular enough mm. for me to like even get my feet settled on the ground. So I'm, um, I'm one of those, you know, just slapping things together <laughs> day at a time and look back and now it's 25 years. I'm going, oh, okay, I'm still here. But these are the stories we need to hear because this is more the reality of a career as a voice actor than, um, you know, the the few and far between that have those monumental, when you are Miley Flanagan as Naruto or, you know, you you have that iconic character, which everybody well, craves. I'll tell you what, with, with Madara Uchiha and Naruto, yeah. it's really interesting because, you know, I liken it to Star Trek. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I was a kid in the seventies watching the watching the syndicated reruns and loving it, and I enjoyed Star Wars. But I was one of those kids who actually wrote letters to Paramount saying Star Wars is great. When are we going to get a, a Star yeah. Trek movie? And then we got it. And you know, it, it's like Naruto. You had your original fans, and then. There were people who, during the pandemic, when the things were gen, locked down, sure, Netflix. But the but the old ones haven't gone anywhere. Mm -hmm. They haven't migrated to other places. They have other things that they love as well, but they still love this show. Yeah. And so the fan base has just gotten larger and larger to the point where we had a reunion uh, panel at Anime Riverside, uh -huh, uh -huh. which was outdoors. I mean, there were, must have been like twenty five hundred people. Wow. That were like in this courtyard and spilling up on the on the hills and like on the walkways mm -hmm. of the building. It was just wild. And of course, you know, when you do an anime, you may have a really large cast, but it doesn't mean you ever meet any of these people. True. So people were asking, you know, it, like, who was your favorite to work with? It's like, I've never worked with any of these people. <laughs> As a matter of fact, this is the first time that these 11 people have ever been on the same stage wow. at the same time or ever been in the same room. It's like, you guys go ahead and talk to each other. We're going to, we're going to talk to ourselves. It's like, I could have, I could have spent an hour just interviewing. Yeah. One of the things that I like to do sometimes at conventions, if I'm doing a Q and A or a panel and people don't have questions, especially a panel, I'll, I'll ask my fellow panelists questions. I'll yeah. interview them. And a nice pronunciation, interview them. That's interview nice them. Yes. yes in, interview, interview them. them. Yeah, that we go. A little Christopher Walken pronunciation. Can you do your voice for us? Which? For Naruto. Oh, Madara Uchiha is yeah. basically me. It's a change in attitude. That's about <laughs> but it. But lower, lower. Oh, not necessarily. Mm. It's a... Less musicality to your to your boys. It your... depends on what's going on. Mm. Because he is one of those characters that is sometimes so taken with his own power that he enjoys listening to his own voice. Um, Typecast again? No. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. It's, um, I mean, I was actually, they didn't, they cast me, they had the original Japanese voice actor and they brought me in mm -hmm. and Played it for a couple of minutes and gave me a line number. It said, do that. I guess they were hearing a similarity between the Japanese actor and myself. Mm -hmm. And so I tried to base a lot of what I was doing off of a little bit of the musicality of, of, of what he was doing. And the interesting thing was when the character first showed up, 
he inhabited other bodies basically. So he had a mask over his <laughs> face. It's one of these things like a soap opera. So for the first couple of years, I didn't have to worry about lip syncing. Oh, so I could wow. act in the role. That's amazing. And that was that was my favorite thing. It was like then the mask came off. It's like, oh, now I gotta match the flaps. Yeah. But I spent a couple of years. And so my big thing with that character, and if you go back, if fans of the show can go back and, and listen for this, but I took out as many contractions as possible. Oh. I changed as many didn'ts to did nots, mm. could not. I the I just said. This is a character who doesn't want to, sh who does not want to shorten what they have to say. He's in no rush. <laughs> He's in no, he is in no rush. Absolutely. And, and whether it was, I'm going to force you to listen to me. Mm. It's that old theory of powerful people, powerful characters don't have to yell. And like, I'll tell my students this sometimes I'll say, you know, have a conversation with somebody and then before you know it, just start lowering your volume hmm. and just see what happens. And basically, if you do it right, you'll make people lean in because you're forcing them to listen. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things. It's like so a powerful character doesn't need – somebody who's sure of themselves doesn't necessarily need to push that out there all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, there are times when they get quieter. That's why, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. the, the biggest time to fear a villain is when they get quiet. <laughs> yeah. And you were, you were also a villain on Voltron. Yes. I was curious, did you watch the original Voltron at any I point in your life? I did not. Were you a fan? And as, a, a, matter of, as a matter of fact, the first session that I went in, um, I asked and they specifically said, no, if you haven't watched it yet, do not watch it. We do not want any element of that. And we like what you did in your audition and that's the direction we want to go in. Please don't color it. Mm -hmm. Now, interestingly enough, the original Zarkon was played by Jack Angel, our, uh, our late dear friend. Um, and I got to know Jack a little bit, um, during the course of a few years and he sent me an email that was basically hey i've heard through the grapevine that they're bringing voltron back some fans have put together a um a petition to get me playing the role of zarkon again and so i'm sending out this invitation to my friends and colleagues Ooh. to sign and it's like didn't know I, you were I already can't, I, can't, I can't really sign that jack i love you but um yeah it's mine now oh. yes yeah, so, <laughs> yeah but yeah and i never i never got the chance to tell him that Oh yeah, well, I think I'm he, sure he heard. I'm sure I'm, he figured it out. I'm th I, oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. He had dozens and dozens and dozens of things, yep. um, and and I'm sure he would have uh, kindly shared the role. And besides, he was King Zarkon. Mm. I was Emperor Zarkon. Ah, I got the upgrades. <laughs> Is that an upgrade? King to Emperor? Yeah. I think so. It technically. I think so. Okay, it's not just a it different. It sounds better. Sounds don't it you sounds think? more you for sure. Yeah, king king sounds a little. Stop. A little I'll be a king or something. I mean, you know, I'd take it. <laughs> I would. I wouldn't say no. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now you worked with the legendary Andrea Romano as the yeah. voice director on that show. What was that I actually like? worked with her twice. Oh, what was the first time? Uh, the first time was on a video game called StarCraft Two. Oh. And that was really interesting. And I always, I always tell people um, that if you're hearing voiceover that you don't like, or you're hearing voiceover that you do like, you're hearing the direction. Hmm. You know, um, to hear some of the scenes that we did in StarCraft II and to realize that we were never in the same room at the same time. I mean, that's all about direction. If the director doesn't set you in the same mind space and the same physical space and understanding mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. you know, the scene will be horrible, <laughs> you know? And it's really, 
it's funny because I I was at a convention with Robert Clotworthy who played the lead in StarCraft II. And we were watching the last scene. And this was like a year after the game came out. And like literally I'm sitting there realizing I was playing things I didn't realize I was playing thanks to the direction that she gave me. You know, <laughs> and and so certainly yeah. then transitioning over and working with her with the full cast um, on Voltron was just amazing, yeah. you know, um, because certainly when you're doing a video game and you're all alone, you don't get the time to sit back and watch or listen to the director working with somebody else or hear yeah. the effect Mm -hmm. that they have on other talent. Um, it's like I tell young voice actors or people who are new to the business um, how valuable taking workshops with other actors is because if you only do solo stuff, you don't really give yourself the chance to fully learn Yeah, because you don't want to have your brain monitoring what you're doing. Yeah. You want your brain fully engaged in the copy, fully engaged in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And if any part of your brain is like out there being Statler and Waldorf <laughs> and watching yeah. and judging and doing that, you're doing yourself a disservice. And so when you're in a workshop and you do something and you're not sure what you did, but it felt right, but then you can see another actor get in the booth, work with maybe the same copy or the same direction or anything like that. And then you see their change. So you see the effect that that had. Then the learning, I think, it's becomes a bit more complete. Yeah. And so. As well as building community yeah. when you're in the class. Yeah. And having colleagues that you can call when you are stuck. Hopefully, or when you yeah. need advice or a shoulder to cry I, 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 Absolutely. I mean, I've got, I've got. I took a class years and years ago, just down the street. Um, Which one? Uh, it was um, and it was a, a casting director night through voice tracks back when Cindy okay. owned it. Oh, geez, you're going way yeah. back. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Back um, when she was up on the second floor of the two two story place that's still here on Cahuenga. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, it may even have, before my time. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> But I believe in that class. I believe Debbie Derryberry was in that class. Bob uh -huh. Joel's Bob Joel's was in that class. Um, Jonathan Cook was in that class, and of course, I sat th sat there and like studied and studied so I could learn how to do the voice of Jonathan Cook <laughs> next on Fox. Yeah, so it's like <laughs> nailed you, it. Yeah, so if you can't, you're right. It's it's it. So um yeah and and that was just that was just a real a real treat and yeah you do get to know people and you but I just think the learning so much more and so when we were doing Voltron watching her work with other actors was just absolutely yeah. amazing. And then Serena Irwin took over later yeah. um when Andrea retired yeah. did you notice a shift or a change? You know Serena Serena She's a wonderful director. I don't think she quite put her stamp on it like she does mm -hmm. on projects that are hers. Now, I think she yeah. really worked on echoing, you know, the energy of what was there already mm -hmm. and trusting the cast a lot, you know, because the characters were already developed, you know. So, yeah. um I mean, it was a it was a ma masterwork of of following somebody else's example as opposed to I need to put my stamp on this, mm. you know, which could have drastically altered the energy of the show. Right, and fans are already used to the tone, right. the particular characterization. Exactly, exactly. Mm. You know, it would I, it would it would be interesting. I, I would love to work on something similar with her. And 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 kind of uh, you know feel the difference in her direction, but um, I thought um, I thought it was really I, it's difficult sometimes to let people do what they do. It's you know one of the things that we learn as actors during the years is to lay back, to listen, to trust others. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like oh, somebody who, uh, a younger 
voice actor posted something on Twitter about how they were excited because they booked something using their own voice and they were really excited about that. <laughs> and for those of us who are character do that versatile thing uh, yeah. it can the hardest thing can be this is the voice they want and this is the voice that's okay and mm -hmm. this is the voice that's perfect for the role as opposed to you sure you don't want me to make him british or something <laughs> make him older <laughs> smaller larger what do you want you know it's yeah. like it's like i am um, I previously left an agent because they said, we want you to send in one take only Oh, for auditions. And I said, I can't do that. For everything, there's a small, medium, and a large. Can I send those in? And then you judge whatever else is going to be submitted through the agency and then pick which one isn't represented, you know, because you'll know. And yeah. doesn't that play? And, and their response was, no, you choose. And I said, I got to go somewhere else because that's just not me. There's so much responsibility on voice actors now with self-direction and um, breaking down copy with out the lines of the other characters and making really strong choices mm -hmm. out of the air. It, it's definitely, the game has changed a lot. Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of voice actors are creating content around their talents. And I feel like you showcase your stuff very good on TikTok. I I. I do the best I can as an old man, you know, <laughs> it's like, I look at the stuff you put together. It's like, Oh, look at that effect. Look at that wipe. That's really good. Oh, that's great. And I just get terrified of even pressing a button and doing things. That's why my stuff literally is like out of the 1950s. I love it, it. It's, it's like one button, one, one touch, one thing, yeah. you know, but I, but one of the things again, much like the voice you know, I didn't join TikTok for the longest time because I would watch stuff and get intimidated. Uh -huh. And I didn't quite realize, no, that's them being them. You just be you, just be you, yeah. just be you and be honest and do what you do, including every now and then being a bit of a curmudgeon. I mean, <laughs> I used to be known as the world's youngest curmudgeon. And now obviously the first <laughs> part of that, ain't, yeah, the first part of that ain't true anymore. Um, <laughs> Now I'm the world's most appropriately aged curmudgeon. So there you go. Um, but then I just kind of did my thing and saw that it was being kind of accepted when, okay, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do me. I'm yeah. going to do what I do. It's not technologically that great. And, you know, um, it's. But that's the thing. You're showcasing your skills in a great way. And the fans are loving it. Yeah, it's it's it, you know, it's, you're always it, on my for you page. Thank you, <laughs> and I'll tell you what I still, you know, at conventions when people come up and say something about you know, oh, I really love what you post on Twitter, or I really love your TikToks. I'm I still kind of trip out at that. It's like people are people actually watch. Yeah, that's cool, and and I appreciate it, and I appreciate it every time they say something. Um, I. Uh, and you don't do this, and I'm very glad. I'm very glad. Some of our friends, some of our colleagues put the same thing up on everything, and it drives me crazy. <laughs> it's like, why do I, I follow do a little you? Bit of that, uh, not, yeah. No, not too much. Yeah. Uh, there's, we have one friend, and they, and they work a lot, and this person works a lot, so I don't blame them yeah. at all. Um, well, it's tough because what performs well on TikTok will not necessarily right. perform perform well on Instagram reels. Right. You know, Facebook, I not really sure and about Facebook these I, days. But. I mean, I said early on on Instagram, this is how I view the world. These are the snapshot and and for the longest time I resisted putting up any Yourself. of my Yeah. Yes. Well, no, no, I put up myself, oh, yeah. but I don't put up professional things. Uh, where I didn't put up stuff to pimp shows that I was in uh, or games I was in or or conventions I was coming to and then it was like Okay, I think now we kind of have to do that, you know, as a service to people because it's yeah. kind of unfair if I'm coming, if I'm doing like a, a convention. Changed. Well, not only yeah. that, but there are people who, you know, I, like I'm doing these in-store appearances, oh, wow. you know, which are kind of a trip. Those are new, mm -hmm. you know, but it's uh, – Whereas a convention, you kind of like every now and then get a chance to sit down and relax because people are going over to see Mark Paul Gossler and say, <laughs> I loved you, Saved by the Bell, you know, yeah. and all that sort of a thing. And, um, but when you're in store, they're just coming to see you. 
Wow. And so it's like doing a, an audio book. Have you, Ooh, have you done the audio book of conventions? I have. I've done a handful, oh maybe God. a dozen. They're not but, my. Favorite. But but don't you, when you leave that session, does your brain feel a little off? Do you feel a little altered? It's so intense, and most Thank of you. the ones that I've done have been in studio. Thank God. Yeah, no, with the director. The those are the only God. ones that I do. Yeah. I I can't do the ones alone. Yeah, because though. Oh. Oh, I I I, 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 yeah. I I bow down to the to the actors that do that. That's amazing. Yeah. But I would mess up so many times, and I would drive myself crazy listening back to it later and editing. Yeah. Because I, I, you know, I've got my my nineteen sixties version of ADD. You know, <laughs> too he has too much sugar. You know, whatever it was, it was just I would have a hard time listening to the book and not doing something else. Yeah. And when you're editing the book, it's got to be letter perfect, so you can't let your eye wander from the page. Mm -hmm. You can't put a the instead of an uh, even though like if you were doing a commercial wouldn't be a problem yeah. if you were doing if you were doing you know animation they might go oh you know what that works better let's keep it mm -hmm. you know but it's like no this has to be every single letter that is typed into the book and so you focus and you focus and you never get a break because nobody else says any line <laughs> you know they're already drinking their coffee uh, yeah and it's just you and so it's like you you read for 90 minutes and on two yeah. hours or whatever and just kind of walk out it's like whoa real world again audiobooks Ooh. kids they're a blast <laughs> <laughs> Look, some people it, it love beats, them. They're, it, they're great it, for some it, people. It, it beats, you know, like working on the highway. That's for sure. And I enjoy the process of creating. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. it's just I'm more of a short form guy. Yeah. But the people who do it, again, I mean, it's a different type yeah. of skill. It's one of those things. One of the first things they do when I'm working with a new student who says who says they're interested in voiceover, I say, okay, great. Give me a, a list of 50 different places you find voiceover because I want them to realize, at least for now, while AI is still not in everything yet. Um, yeah. But a lot of those, a lot of those avenues, I think, are closing down. <laughs> so you do coaching. How do how do um, potential students find you? Uh, they beg me because I love to teach. I hate finding students. Okay. I hate putting together classes. I hate putting together workshops. I hate doing the adult stuff. Uh -huh. I love talking about the our our art. Yeah. It's like one of the things I say about voiceover is why is voiceover the only art on the planet that it seems people feel the only way to do it is professional. Okay? People want to dance, they would go to a dance class and they right. take dance classes mm. or they go to a club and they dance. Okay. Um, or they would go to the local community theater and audition and be in the chorus or play, yeah. you know, dream ballet Lori in Oklahoma or whatever. You want to paint, you don't sit there and go, I'll paint as soon as I have a gallery show. But voiceover, it's like, you, you know, you can do your own thing on the internet. Mm -hmm. You can create your own podcast. Now. Fan you can create your own. You can do fan dubs. That's how Frank Todaro got to start. John Bailey, a lot of yep, people. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. But but the thing is, even even if you don't want to jump in yeah. in this rat race, if you don't want to jump in this game, but you still want to be a voice actor, okay. I I grew up. In San Jose, California, and we had something called San Jose Civic Light Opera, where we would have mostly locals, and then we'd import in a couple of stars from Hollywood. We'd bring up Joanne Worley to play Mama Rose in Gypsy, and then everybody else would be locals. Um, one of the big ones that I remember as a kid, none of your viewers will know these names, but they brought in Bobby Van and Van Johnson to play... Mr. Applegate and Joe Hardy and Damn Yankees. And old Joe was played by this guy by the name of Fred Fraboni. And Fred Fraboni was in every show that they did. And Fred Fraboni was great. Mm -hmm. And Fred Fraboni hung with every star from Hollywood. And there, there was no drop off when they had dialogue together. The only difference was Fred Fraboni didn't go to Hollywood and pursue anything because he didn't want, he was a local pest control guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's talk about Transformers. Okay. You were the voice of Optimus Prime. 20 years Prime. ago. 20 years that? ago. I mean. 20 years. There was a show that I grew up with. No way. Yeah. 
Oh my god. Yeah. I feel so old. What? No. <laughs> do you want to do the voice for us? Well, sure, I suppose. <laughs> But you see, it comes down to which version do you want? Uh, um, interestingly enough, because that was that was dubbing an anime, uh -huh. um, and the character had a face mask. Again, very happy about that. But we had two different directors on the show. Uh -huh. One worked on the original Generation One with Peter Cullen, and so he had a habit of taking words out, slowing it down. So in those episodes, I tended to sound bit more like John Wayne, a bit more <laughs> ponderous and that sort of a thing. <clears throat> so a bit closer to the original uh, Peter Cullen. But in the other episodes, it was directed by an actor who didn't work on the, on the original series, and he would put more words in. And he tended to like him young and charged up and <laughs> gung-ho. All right, Autobots, let's transform. I'll meet you at the space bridge. That whole sort of a thing. So, and interestingly enough, they didn't know that that was going on until we did a, a convention a year later. Um, we did a bot con and somebody asked, why are you different in different episodes? I said, different directors. <laughs> and they both kind of looked at me and said, why didn't you say anything? I said, I thought it was my job to do what you were telling me to do. <laughs> Sorry. But, uh, and then of course, then of course now there's Peter Cullen currently what he does for the films, you know, which is a different voice altogether, you know? Um, so I, yeah, I do. I, it's like, which version do you want? You want the version from the theme park, you know? Not saying that that was ever me, but hmm. <laughs> anyhow. Wow. Hmm. So you mentioned conventions. I yeah. kind of took a glance at your convention schedule. You have so many cons coming up. Where can our fans go to hear more about where they can find you? Um, well, you can check out my website, which hopefully is updated, but sometimes isn't. That's kneecap.net, N-E-K-A-P. Okay. .net. Um, I also post <laughs> on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and my uh, Facebook fan page is Neil Kaplan Voice Actor. So, awesome. Yeah. So I try to let people know because I'm, I'm getting out and about as, as, as much as possible. Um, yeah. Riding this delicious wave of, of Naruto love. Is that where most of your fan base comes from? These days, it? it sure seems yeah. like it. Yeah. I mean, well, but it's interesting because, you know, every now and then somebody will come up on TikTok and go, I think of you as the, I, I narrated um, a series of YA books oh. called I Am Number Four. And the uh, first book was made into a movie. So that always is interesting when people know me from doing the books that they grew up <laughs> listening to. Yeah. Um, and then there are some people that know me from... Skylanders, and then there are some people who know me from uh, from um, Destiny Two, mm. you know, and and I I I think my my specialty tends to be delicious villains, mm. people with power or creatures with power. If it, so it might be, um, you know, so it's like, and I I have pe I basically my spread at conventions. I have so many different pictures because. There's so many different possible things that people might love. Yeah. You know? I mean, certainly Madra Uchiha has is 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 lapped the field recently, yeah. you know, over the last couple of years with people watching uh, yeah. that 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 show in um in, during lockdown. Yeah. But it's sometimes fun trying to figure out They're like what where else are fans do I know of. you from? They're like looking at your pictures. Yeah, like, oh yeah. wait, you're that. Oh, Neil, well, it's been so lovely chatting with you. We'll have to have you back on too. Anytime. To chat more about your upcoming graphic novel and all the other amazing things that you have going on. Mm -hmm. And I'll be sure to include a link um, to your website for anyone that might be interested okay, in okay. your appearances. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to Allison's Wonderland. And we'll be back next week. Bye.